Hi everybody, we are building up our information that we need to be able to talk more about the multiplier and about how we calculate what the multiplier is within an economy. And in order to do that, the next thing that we need to do, the next piece of the jigsaw, is to look at marginal propensities. We know that in economics, if something's marginal, it means we have an additional amount of something. And the way to remember this is like with a piece of lined paper. You have on the side of it a margin. It's an additional bit of paper, your margin. So the marginal amount in economics is having an additional amount of something. Your propensity is your likelihood, really, of doing something. How likely are you to do something? How much are you going to do something? And we've got four different types of marginal propensity that we're going to look at here. So the marginal propensity to save, tax and import. You will have noticed something about these three things. We know that saving, taxation and imports are all forms of leakages or withdrawals. And then here we have the marginal propensity to consume. So what we're looking at here is if we have an additional amount of money. So let's say that somebody receives £10 more you give them £10. So this person here has received their £10 and you ask what are they going to do with this additional amount of money that they've received. Some of it they might save, some of it they might pay in tax, some of it they might spend on imports and some of it they might spend. So this would be on shopping <coughs> if they consume. And each of these has a formula so the marginal propensity to save, this is, we call this MPS, and the formula for this, it's the change in saving divided by your change in income. The marginal propensity to tax is MPT, and that means what will be your change in taxation when you have a change in income because remember you're being given £10 extra so your income is going up by £10. The marginal propensity to import, little m, is your change in spending on imports divided by your change in income. So how much of your new income are you spending on imports? And these are each looking at changes and this is not a percentage change. That's really important. It's just a change. So going up two, going down seven, anything like that. It's just a change. It's not a percentage change. Your marginal propensity to consume, this is MPC and this is the change in your consumption divided by the change in your income. These three at the top as we said before, we know these are all withdrawals. They all cause money to leave the circular flow of income. They're all withdrawals. And whenever you have any money, your money can either be spent or consumed or it's withdrawn from the circular flow. So of this £10, either it's going to be used for consumption or it's going to be withdrawn from the circular flow of income because it will be saved, spent on tax or spent on imports. And therefore, if you have any amount of money for instance, here the £10, you know that the £10 can be divided between these two. And it's therefore true that your marginal propensity to consume must be equal to 1 take away the marginal propensity to withdraw. Because if one is representing all of the additional money that you've received and you take away the proportion of that that's spent on consumption, you're going to be left with 
what's withdrawn from the economy. Because also it's true that the marginal propensity to consume plus the marginal propensity to withdraw must equal one. Because all these are showing you is out of your additional income, what proportion of it goes on saving, tax, imports, consumption. So therefore, these proportions, the marginal propensity to consume plus the marginal propensity to withdraw, must equal one. The final thing to say here, I think you will have realised already, is that the marginal propensity to save plus the marginal propensity to tax plus the marginal propensity to import equal the marginal propensity to withdraw. And for someone who doesn't know, this all sounds very complicated. There are lots of different marginal propensities. But you just need to go back to the beginning and look to and say to yourself, marginal just means an additional amount. And the propensity is your likelihood that you're going to do something with it. And you have the three types of withdrawals. And all together, these marginal propensities add up to just the marginal propensity to withdraw. And if you're not withdrawing the money from the economy, then you are spending the money. So therefore, the marginal propensity to consume plus the marginal propensity to withdraw must equal one. And therefore, for example, you can say that the marginal propensity to consume is equal to one minus the marginal propensity to withdraw. This seems like quite a lot of information, so I'd recommend that you write it down, leave it for a bit and then come back to it and then do some of the questions to check whether you have understood.